Lately, I have been ordering more real estate because real estate's never gonna be a bad buy in MTG, in my opinion. And I've also been ordering some collectible cards just for my collection for the notebook. But let's get into what I am buying for middle of August, 2022. And the video starts right now. Highest level of gratitude to our patrons who power the channel through Patreon. Check out the Patreon link in the description to learn about monthly giveaways, VIP Discord access, and even our official playmat. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel are Magic. I am Drake and Josh in your dreams and your nightmares. I've been ordering a couple of different things here lately. Like I said, some real estate, a little bit of collectibles. We're going to open, see what I've got, organize this stuff. And then we will take a look at some prices. There's a nice foil etched Najila the Blade Blossom. Nice little foil etched Emoti Celebrant of Bounty. Also, we got King Eternal Brago in the foil etched treatment there. And a Borderless Shattered Sanctum. This is that Midnight Hunt land coming at you. Tapped unless you control two or more other lands. You know what? In EDH, we normally end up with a lot of extra lands. Turns out it's not that difficult in Commander to hit two or more other lands. So you can kind of see what I've been looking at this month. I wanted to catch up on some of the land cycles that I had missed. I've been trying to complete this collection ever since the set came out. Spent time on other things, spent money on other things, but I was at a nice little place this month where it was time to sort of Look at this again. I'm getting settled into our new house. My wife and I just moved. And so it was a good time to sort of look at the collection and pull some of the cards that we hadn't pulled. These are those same cycle of lands as Shattered Sanctum, except these are from Midnight Hunt. I wanted to have these. These are just going to be commander lands for a long time. Very playable. Two or more other lands in play is the only thing you need to figure out. There's a Dream Root Cascade. So now I'm just going to have one of each of these. And I got the borderless because right now they're not that much more expensive than the base level copies. And so it was kind of an easy decision to grab those. Very well packaged here. A little over packaged, but I'm never going to complain about a little bit of over packaging as long as it's not absolutely ridiculous. I've gotten some over packaging where I'm like, well, this kind of defeats the purpose. Sundown Pass, another of the Crimson Vows, oh, Midnight Hunt, Rockfall Veil. You see, this time I did not go with TCG Player Direct. I was sort of trying to snipe off, because I was going with the collectibles as well. Sort of was trying to snipe off the best prices I could find, regardless of, regardless of if it was direct or not. Ooh, I don't like that taped in there. That's okay, though. Keeps it from sliding around. Probably a good call. Oh yeah, I forgot. I did pick up... I grabbed a Voldaran Estate. When I was looking at the borderless lands... Look at this. Little Akiri Line Slinger on one side. And then we've got Voldaran Estate on the other. I did go ahead and nab one of these. It's good in a Vampire Commander deck. I've still got, you know, my original Edgar deck from when that Precon came out. That's one of those kind of tribal decks where... I've just sort of uh, been collecting cards over time, you know, have that tribal. And then every couple of sets, check and say, hey, have any cool new vampires come out that can replace any of the vampires that are in there? And that's the kind of land I definitely want to pick up for that. A little Death Cap Glade. These are all looking in pretty good condition. I'm happy with how all these came. Because I did this whole order over TCG Player. But I did come from, like I said, quite a few sellers. I was just trying to snipe the best prices that I could. Look at our last little package here, and then we'll go through these and we'll talk about the prices that I picked everything up for and the total order price with shipping. It's like we got two in this little package here. Crock the Thumbless. Been breaking out big time in CEDH, huh? And also Ikra Shadiki, the Usurper. So let's take a look at these lands. This was the main part of this purchase were these borderless lands. I wanted to have these for commander. 
I'm the type of player that gets one, sleeves it up, puts it in a notebook, and that is where it stays. I proxy a lot of my commander decks. Mostly all of my commander decks. I do have a few I'll update to completely real cards so that I can take them to, you know, GPs. Any place where players might get a little frustrated by the fact that it's all proxies, even though I can show the entire stack of proxies in my notebook nine times out of ten. Those were the Midnight Haunt ones. Look at these from Crimson Val. I still do like to have copies of them on hand so that I can say, hey, look, there's no sense in buying multiple copies. Why, like in TGO, we can uh, just use one copy is all you need. And then you've got it for all of your decks. Shattered Sanctum sort of pulling up those. I love the borderless treatments on those. Love even more that they are the borderless non-foils. So you know they're never going to curl. Always going to be great. And they just look absolutely beautiful. I'll show you these as we get them into the notebook. But I did want to show off my little haul. Like I said, I just kind of went through and you'll see in my notebook how I've got them sectioned off. Just went through and looked for my open spots. Saw if I could find a good price on them. As you can see, I did a lot of pickups on the uncommons. Any of the real cheaper stuff that I hadn't picked up yet. Went ahead and grabbed that. Rograk, son of Roga. This little dude, I'm probably going to build him. One of Jake's top commanders, Carador, Ghost Chieftain. Got Brago, King Eternal. Our editor, Joe. Whooped my butt earlier in the year with this card. Modi, Celebrant of Bounty. Love that cascading effect. Najila, if we want to go see EDH combat. Let's go to the notebook. So this is the notebook I've been using recently. I'm kind of zoomed in, so I'm just showing you right there. It's a Vault X notebook. Link to this on Amazon down in the description below. I'm sort of in the long-term process of testing a bunch of different notebooks, and this is the one that I'm on right now. I've liked it. I have enjoyed this one, but I will let you know probably in a year or so exactly how much I like this one and if I've tested any of the others. So you can see this is sort of where I keep a lot of my like secret layers and collectible stuff. I'm going to start by putting our lands up front. You'll recognize these lands from other episodes or other episode. This is my second what I'm buying. I did a what I bought for the secret layer. We'll see if we can if we continue doing the secret layer openings, but for my last what I'm buying, you'll notice the fetch lands up there and the battle bond lands that I bought from uh, the reprints from Battle for Baldur's Gate. So we're just going to kind of slot these in here. This is the EDH real estate section of my notebook. I don't know if this is the absolute best way to be storing these for long term storage. If you've got any notes, please let us know down in the comments. It'd be a great conversation to, to get going in our community because I've had a lot of questions about the notebook that I'm using or sleeves or any of the storage options, where I'm storaging, climate, you know, stuff like that. And so it would be great to get your take on it if you've got any beautiful insight that may be gleaned. So there, yeah, there we go. We've got our full page of just some commander real estate and some awesome glares. We're going to take the Voldaren estate and we're going to find a spot for it. I think I already had some sort of like specific tribal stuff oh yeah there's a vampire right there it's gray merchant gray we're gonna have to move you up here pal this is a not a super valuable card but jake gave me that it's an old border gray merchant of asphodel my uh, edh deck is that i'm kind of known for is my mono black deck and so he gave that to me when we were opening that set last year we'll put this right next to the uh swamp that came with the uh dracula secret layer Last year, we'll put the little Voldaren estate there. And when I go to upgrade my vampire deck, we'll be good to go. So let's sneak over to the Commander Legends section. I've got it marked off. You can see with the collector's numbers for these. And I've already got some of the slots filled in. So we're going to go to 514 with Najila the Blade Blossom. This is actually, I believe, the very first card in the set of oil etched cards from Commander Legends. Yep. So I wanted to make sure that I picked that one up on this go around to sort of have that very first, that very first one in the set. And I know, look, it starts with Najil of the Blade Blossom right there at the beginning. I just sort of have all of these organized by collector's number. And I'll show these to you as I 
go through here. Some of these on the Vault X, the height of the windows here is a little bit different. They get bigger towards the bottom. Not sure if that's intentional or just a, if it's a bug or a feature. 16, 17, 18, 19, but I do know that it is kind of obnoxious with this kind of sleeve in particular. I just happen to have a bunch of these sleeves, so I'm using them until I run out of them and then I'll re-up on something better. Like I said, if anybody knows a better way that I could or should be doing this so that I save myself some heartache in the future, that would be great to hear. Slot in Jake's little commander here, Carador, Ghost Chieftain. We actually played in a two-headed giant event when we went to Vegas this summer and Jake played that deck and we won. We basically won. Jake and I both missed that he had lethal finishing combo with Mike and Trike, which is Achaeus the Unhallowed and Triskelion. You can do that combo with just those two cards, turns out, everybody. You don't need a third card to sacrifice it. Got ton of the blood, blood sower in there. 69, we need to scoot forward a little bit just to be nice. 68, 69 is here. But we did have the combo win. I played like a uh, super control heavy version of the new Maestro Commander from the Precon. 574 on this one that goes here. And I was able to control the board and sort of stop our opponents. One of our opponents was running mill. That was pretty crazy. Tried to mill us out completely and actually did because we let the combo go thinking that we couldn't do it and we were already sort of like how do we do this and then we got talked out of it hey if you're watching and you were our opponent on that they were super cool not uh not giving you any crap for talking us out of it because we didn't know either but then actually next turn the opponent milled me out completely and we lost but really we won because we just didn't know how it worked and you need to know how your deck works so that you can be sure to pilot it properly. Anyway, so yeah, that's where I'm at with my collection of Commander Legends etched. I think it's coming along kind of nicely. It's sort of like a slower, slower little thing. I tack on a few of these cards whenever I do an order of something else. And I am uh, I'm pretty proud of my progress on this so far. These were sort of rare. I opened up a bunch of boxes of this on the channel too, actually. But didn't open a ton of the foil etch, so I've really had to get these on the secondary market. And then it ends there with 614. So I guess next time I need to order 614 and I'll start from the back and work my way forward. But the big purchase on this episode, these from Midnight Hunt and these from Crimson Vow. I think they are always going to be playable. I think it's a great time to pick them up. There's a link to all of those cards in the top pinned comment of this video. So if you want to pick these up, I'm only going to do the lands on there. You can pick up the Commander Legends collectible stuff if you want to on your own. But I am going to link these down there. Easy to go link. Go down there, click it, buy it. You help support the channel at the same time. We'd really appreciate it. Other than that, that is all. I am done. Nothing on this channel is financial garlic. Have a good night.